gentlemen, it's an honor for me to join this morning and um, as we get up for the presentation for the National Child Safeguarding Policy, a first of which. Studies have shown that specific children experience various forms of violence in the home, in schools, and in the community. In fact, we should not rule out homes. Homes are um, where most of these abuses happen, and uh, later on I will be sharing statistics with you as to the number of uh, child abuse cases in our homes. In specific, amongst uh, the, the other countries, the uh, rates very high in terms of violence. And of course, you are aware of domestic violence in the world. So we are in the Pacific in two key countries. It's a well-known fact that domestic violence rates very high in the Pacific region with Fiji sort of being at the top. And likewise, we can model that fact that any form of violence are inflicted of children is so domestic violence in all. And I think one of the things uh, that leads to child abuse uh, and inflict violence against the children is the fact that we have high rates of violence in the home. And, and that's sort of, uh, what should I say, the home is supposed to be a place where children are cared for, for values. And there are various forms of discipline. I would agree with that. There are various forms uh, that uh, or measures that parents can use to discipline their children. And uh, what should I say, we, we, we all are parents all our grandparents and our, our time, the, the time that we spend with our children and our families is sort of very, very We are all racing with time, we have our jobs, we have our professions, we have other activities that we, that we engage in. But apart from all that, the time, time that we are supposed to spend with children is very important. Okay? So there are various factors and I'm sure today's session will look at all the factors and how we can actually work towards ensuring that our children are grow up in a safe and loving and caring environment. Like the schools are no different. My experience with schools is there is children, there are a lot of children who come to school from, from violent homes and unfortunately many a times we rely on the teachers to be So parents need to fulfill their responsibilities and of course when they come to school the teachers and the heads of school are there. But any case of violence, the children should be encouraged to speak up to and that's very important. If they don't report, they grow up really that, that it's, it's okay to be violent. It's okay to be violent. I mean, all of us, if we all, if, if we are truly, um, if we truly believe in protecting our children, this is part of our experience. We were, if we were both, that the children to that. How many of us, I mean, in this room to say you will never be done by your parents or disciplined by your parents? Uh, by your teachers as well. In schools that time, I remember the ticket in the road and this way the that time would come. So it's been there in our culture. But how do we get to them? So you should be aware that we are doing a national election for the number of as well. Violence is embedded in our culture, but how do we get rid of them? What triggers violence? What makes it right to inflict um, pain on others to let go of your various complicated factors and we need to find solutions. So in 2021, ladies and gentlemen, the Child Welfare Act uh, National Database recorded a total of 1,518 cases. A total of 70% of the cases reported were of child neglect, physical abuse and sexual abuse. There was a decrease compared to 2020 in which 1,790 1, cases were reported. The decrease in reporting can be due to COVID restrictions as children were home, but who knew what was happening within home? The message has a decrease, but it was there really a decrease. But we had our reporting mechanisms uh, enabled to report the child that life, the child that life. But how many of those children who were due to COVID restrictions had the access to the children? And uh, so restrictions were there, schools were closed. In, uh, lots of borders being placed, and there were movements restricted for safety. Maybe one, you, you have a discussion later on. Um, was COVID? I said this one by um, Did we need, like, in, in case of domestic violence, I'm trying to mix up child safety and domestic violence. We found that during the COVID period, domestic violence rose. That makes you think, why? 
was, was did COVID uh, create an avenue for families to be under lockdown, whether it is to get movement and more frustrations or the job losses, the other social social issues that arose due to COVID decision. But violence is always there. Did it need COVID to get it out of our system? No. So things like that you talk there, but despite that little increase uh, in 2021, these statistics are very high. Even if it's a slight decrease, it's still very high. We should be celebrating that. So like we all agree that our children, not only our children, but all children, we are very protective about, about our children. But in a public space, we need to think about all children. And uh, as we said, that they need to grow up in a very, very uh, good, uh, loving, caring, and protective environment. But when the abuse happens at home, it defeats the And uh, of course, it has consequences on the child's development. You don't simply beat up a child, but simply growl at a child, you don't help in developing the child. The child is going to grow up <coughs> not believing in himself, always living in fear. If education is affected, it's the stock of well being to be affected. And of course, we know again, we um, walk with that, and it was long lasting. Sometimes the violent behavior is there, not, it doesn't come out when they are children, but when they become adults, of course. Then put it there. So uh, that's why uh, we're trying to have this policy in place where everybody knows how to behave, what to do, what are the reporting and, uh, For us at this ministry and for us at the government, we believe in providing a uh, provision of safe and effective care and all of the promote their welfare. Of course, we're not going to enter every home to check how the children are afraid. That's why we have systems in place where anybody can report. If there's crying or something, beating or all these things, every individual must be part of it. If we only concentrate on our own home, my child is safe, it's not going to work. So everybody takes responsibility. And earlier on, we used to say, oh, the fight, the fight. We won't interfere because it's a personal matter. Now it's no longer a personal matter. We have made it our business. Again, there's nothing stopping you from reporting, saving somebody's life. You know, just taking a lot of life. And the biggest victims of domestic violence we see are big children. We, we cannot separate domestic violence from violence. When the mothers suffer, Violence in the home, the children And if they are boys, or whether girls, there's no differentiate between boys and girls. If you grow up seeing violence in your home, in your community, in your neighborhood, then of course you know it's alright. It's alright. For, for a boy to see that his father is beating up his mother, swearing and growling and spawning and lashing out, well, it's okay. He believes it's okay. And I could make the girls learn at all also. The home, whatever happens in the home environment, though we cannot control, but we can create advocacy, we can create awareness. How do people control the income? It's all about income management, working away, you know, taking some personal time, getting back from the situation. We have lost a lot of lives, and we have read in the media a lot that happens. And it, it's sort of very, very scary. As a nation, we have progressed in the child protection sector since we ratified the UN Convention on the Rights of Children in 1993. Longer. We declared our obligation as a nation uh, to protect children and the full spectrum of rights under the Convention. So in respect to Article 19 of the UN uh, CRC government sector, the civil uh, society organizations like yourself are committed to play an active role in taking all appropriate measures to ensure that children are protected from all forms of abuse while in the care of parents, legal guidance, and other persons who have the care of children. You know we have homes around the country, residential homes around the country, where children are removed from homes, children are removed from parents who have uh, shown abuse and neglect, and these children come into the care of the state. And but, uh, I, one of the problems I see is the homes only uh, can um, accommodate those children after the age of 18. But believe me, 
some children are still within us, uh, for some children are still within our home, and there's no rush from our side to push them. We keep them as well as they need our children. So we look after them. Of course, there are a lot of NGOs and FBOs who have homes that cater for children, and we commend you for them. That's the whole of it.